Um, thank you everyone for coming. My name is Alex Behrens. Um, I head up product marketing for Open Zeppelin. Um, today we are going to be covering on-chain governance with Open Zeppelin's new governor contract, um, defender support, and of course, tally voting integration. Um, so we have Hadrian and Martine here from our team and Denison, the CEO and co-founder of Tally, also with us. Um, so our mission at Open Zeppelin is to protect the open economy. Um, most of you have probably heard of Open Zeppelin contracts, and that's probably the reason why you are here. Um, so we recently added governance support um, in 4.2 and now 4.3 with the governor contract, which is basically the spiritual successor to Compound's Governor Alpha and Governor Bravo. Um, we also have an audit service, and you can check out our public audits on our blog. And then also a year and a half ago, we launched Open Zeppelin Defender, which provides um, security for smart contract operations and automations. Um, we have a couple integrations with uh, both Compound and our governor uh, that Martine is going to go into. So I'm going to hand over the mic to Hadrian now, um, and he's going to get going on governance. That's nice. Yeah, I'm Hadrian. Uh, I'm working with Fran, that's also here, on, on the smart contracts. And so we basically designed the, so the contract with Defender. Uh, and yeah, that's basically it. Maybe uh, Martin, you can present yourself. Sure. Yeah, I'm Martin, and I'm part of the Defender team. I work developing and designing Defender. Um, may we, Pala? Sure. Um, Santiago, everyone calls me Pala, though. I'm one of the developers as well on the Defender team working side by side with Martin. Um, Wichi, do you want to go? Sure. Uh, I'm Wichi. I'm not a developer, sadly, but I run the events here with Open Zeppelin. And Alex? Um, are you in? But I do product marketing for Open Zeppelin, I'm doing a number of things from normal marketing stuff to publishing um, some kind of detailed blogs and tutorials for how to use our products. Cool. Um, I'm Fran. I'm one of the other maintainers of Open Zeppelin contracts. Looking forward to answering your questions today. I think we're missing you, Denison. Yeah, uh, and I am Denison, uh, CEO and co-founder of Tally. Um, we are tools committed to making on-chain governance work. Um, we have a voting interface that is compatible with uh, Open Zeppelin Governor. Okay, so I'll take it from here. Uh, so first thing that maybe we want to discuss today, I mean, most of you might already know that, but what is governance? If we have a look at the, at the definition, it's just the process and the interaction and the social system that 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 allows a, a group, so a government, a state to, or just a group of people to, to make decisions. And what's interesting is that the definition from Wikipedia and the, the speak of a network. And I'm not sure if they are thinking about a blockchain kind of network, but I think it, it's very interesting. And and here the question is, what are the different types of governance that we observe uh, on our day-to-day -day basis? And you, you might know about governance token. There is a comp, governance token for compound. There is uni for, for uni. So, uh, but, and there are a lot of other projects, obviously, with, with different tokens that are, are used for governance. But then the governance can be applied in very different ways. And there is a more, more, more old school uh, off-chain governance where there are a few administrators, a few uh, key keepers, uh, either one person or preferably a multi-sig, and they are in control of everything. And, and community members can express their opinion, sometimes on Twitter, sometimes on something a bit more uh, complex, like civil, where you are able to, to prove that you own token when, when you vote. But the results here are non-binding. And in the end, the, the person in control can still do whatever they want. So that's what I would call the more off-chain uh, governance, the kind of governance. And then there is very strong and very strict on-chain governance, which we also see very frequently, particularly uh, Compound is known for that, but I think also um, uh, Uniswap Grant uses that mechanism. And here, the, the contract that is able to, to act, to, to make decision, to, to register operation on-chain, this one is a contract that uh, contains a lot of proposals by members of the community or by administrator or developers 
and then committee members have to vote on these proposals. And this is much stronger because uh, the admin doesn't have the ability uh, to perform any administrative actions without the community voting and, and approving and debating these actions. And this is way better in terms of, uh, I, I believe, in terms of community involvement. And that's what we are seeing more and more. And this is a screenshot from, from Tally uh, of such a proposal. So Tally, like you will see quite a while in a while with, with, with Denison, is, a, is an amazing front end where you are able to see proposals that have been made on different governance systems. This one, I believe, is from Compound. And you see that there was a proposal to add collateral, uh, or collateral factors for two tokens. And a lot of people voted. And here is a mostly voted for. And you can see the participation rate. And this is very strong because you see that this proposal that was executed uh, could not have been executed with all, all these people uh, expressing their opinion and their, their, their ideas about how Compound should be governed. And if we have a look at this subgraph that I built a while ago, we can see that on mainnet, there are a lot of governors. Uh, I counted about 80 instances that are either governor alpha, governor bravo, or a small variation of those. And if you have a look on the right side of the screen, there is a list of addresses and names. And you see that there are very common ones that Uniswap governor bravo that we know about. But there is also bond at the T, governor alpha, uh, uh, Yam governor alpha, obviously, uh, Stray governor alpha, and there is even call it whatever, uh, call it what you like, governor alpha. So there are a lot of governors on, on chain, and sometimes they are just copies of compound, and sometimes there are variations, variation in the functions that they implement, variation of the events they emit, and and this is an issue. This is an issue because it's very difficult for for tools like Tally or or even for the subgraph to clearly understand what's happening on chain, because sometimes a different governor will emit different things or will have different internal function, which means that it's more difficult to interact with it. And this is where Open Zeppelin uh, jumps in and says, OK, let's use our knowledge uh, to build a governor system that is, uh, that is modular by design, just like we do for our ERC20, 721, our contracts, where there is a base contract that you can expand through modules. And the objective here is to have a, a simple path for user to deploy simple governors, but also make sure that whenever they expand stuff, uh, they don't break the core components. And as long as they don't modify the core components, uh, the majority of the contract will remain compatible with tools like Tally. And I, we think this is great for, for the entire ecosystem. And so here we see that uh, our governor core comes with uh, quite a few modules. And some of the modules are required, some are optional. And I would say even some modules are not even built. Because uh, beyond the module I will just show now, there are also all the modules that members of the community will probably build later. And maybe that's something we'll discuss as well. But we, have, we wanted this to be modular. And so we wanted people to be able to configure a lot of things. And there are two main things that require us to be configured through module. And that module that are required by the system, it could not deploy a, 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 a governor with all these modules. And these are the voting and the counting module. And we'll see just a bit later what, what they do. But basically, the idea is how the user weigh in the, in the proposal and what, how can they express their, their opinion. And then there are optional modules. There are modules to bind our governor with a time lock. In the compound system, there is a time lock always attached to, to, to a governor, so that even if the, when, the, when a proposal is accepted, uh, it has to go through a time lock mechanism. Uh, there are threshold mechanisms. There are a, quite a, a few modules we have, and, and maybe more modules that, that people might, might want to do. So first, the voting module. And the voting module is basically where the user uh, gets their voting for, for, from. And so uh, we have three variants of this module, one which is the governor votes, the simple one that can bind to our ERC20 votes contract, which we released uh, just before in version 4.2. So we were, you are able to deploy uh, voting tokens now with, with OpenZepin. If you already have an ERC20, 
you can either upgrade it to this or wrap it uh, inside a voting token that you can use with our governor or, or you can also use the uh, governor vote comp that uses a very slightly different interface and that makes our governor compatible with comp token that are already out there so if for some reason compound wanted to or uniswap want them to move from their existing governor to our governor they would just use this um this module and they could dine into their their already existing and pretty known well-known token without having to upgrade it which is not possible in their case or wrap it in something that would make it more difficult for the community and one thing that we also have is that we have additional features on our ARC20 votes that are not present in compound which is a historical total supply that we also keep track of and this means that you can also use our uh, governor vote quorum fraction module which on top of using this this uh, this 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 ERC20 vote contract also uses a quorum that is a ratio of the of the supply and quorum is something pretty common in voting system you don't want an action to happen if nobody voted or if the number of voters is uh, not large enough uh, and with this module you are able to to tailor that as a fraction of the total supply let's say i want the, the number of voters to be five percent or ten percent of the total supply and you're able to customize this and if you have a token that gets mint and burned as part of uh, the process of your application uh, this will automatically reflect into the quorum so we think this is a, a pretty nice feature what you don't see here but you may want to to build uh, would be a governor vote system that would use nfts for example uh, to get weight to power your, your governor system and here we don't want you to to have to rebuild your entire governor if you want to use nfts basically you only have to have a, a an nft token with the the right features in it and then you just build your your module so that it binds into this nft nft contract and then you can vote with nfts so i think this is very interesting and the next thing next thing is uh what can people say when they vote and this has been a difference in compound between alpha and bravo uh, in Alpha, you could vote for or against. In Bravo, they added an abstention mechanism. And you could imagine other system where people give a score from, let's say, 0 to 100, and then the average or the median of the user's score would, would be used to decide on a proposal. So this is also something that you may want to expand through, through, through your own module. And here we have a, a module that is just governor vote comp, uh, which is somehow similar to what comp does uh, the only difference i think is that the quorum we can abstain vote towards the quorum uh, and we have this function count in mode that is a public function uh, so that when you have a governor uh, that is a compound governor you are able to query this function to do some introspection and understand what what is the module for voting so if you want to simulate the voting of chain or try to have to understand what's going on in this in this governor uh, the governor can basically say what how it's going to process uh, the votes. So those are the two required uh, modules, but there is one very useful uh, optional module. It's the time lock module uh, because without this, by default, the governor will execute the action in its own name. So anything that you send to the other world for a proposal would be executed by the governor. Uh, but you can add a time lock on top of that, and you have two modules here that are either uh, the, the governor time lock control or the governor time lock compound uh, which basically allows you to bind either into an open zeppelin time lock if you have one deployed or into a compound time lock again we want to to be compatible with the ecosystem so if you have a comp token and a comp time lock our governor can fit just right in the middle of, of, of these two with, with no, no particular issues um, and uh, they provide additional functions like the queue function uh, and they are compatible with uh, with governor alpha and bravo events obviously when you use one of these obviously the, the event the action to the outside world would go through the time lock so you would have to set the time lock as the administrator of the system and not the governor the governor will just control the time lock which will take action after that so this is a quite a view of the module and and it might feel complex but hopefully we, we have the contract wizard for it and here it's really something i want to to show the wizard sits wizard.openzeppelin.com and I strongly encourage everybody to, to go check this. This is an amazing piece of tech. Uh, you can build the contract you want, ERC20, ERC755 as modules. 
And recently we added governor support to this. So here you see that this is a governor where I want it to be compatible with a conch token, uh, but this is not possible if my Chrome is a fraction. So I would say that the Chrome is 1000 tokens I have to have to vote. Uh, and I will add a, a compound timer because that's we are doing a compound system just like this. And we want maybe to add proposal threshold of, of 10 tokens. So here we already have the code so that uh, for proposing someone would need to have 10 tokens, the quorum would be 1000 tokens. You can customize the voting delay. Let's just put one day. Uh, that should be that should be enough for example, but maybe uh, maybe you want to do like uh, 100 days if you want a system more, more with more voting duration, and and this this wizard will take care of everything for you. Particularly some of the overrides that are part of Solidity, you don't have to care about them. You you can just do it, do, do it yourself, and this will give you a contract that you can uh, download or open to Remix, and, and and you can start deploying deploying them. Obviously, if you had some some more code and some more feature. We we'll always encourage you to have your contracts audited before putting any real value on mainnet for it. But this at least helps you iterate very quickly on, on test networks. Uh, one thing that you might not see here is there is this small Bravo compatibility, Bravo compatible checkbox. And if you add it, it will add uh, uh, a governor uh, governor compatibility uh, Bravo. And this is a very particular module we have that is not really designed to add feature sets like uh, like a time lock or like uh, like changing the way counting works. This is specifically targeting at having the maximum Bravo compatibility, because by default our contracts are compatible with Bravo in terms of the events they emit. That way, it's easier for UIs like Tally to 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 work with them. But uh, we are also trying to make our governor very gas efficient by not storing data on chain or just as small as possible because storage is very expensive. And today gas is, is, is really expensive, compounded with the, with the high price of Ether operation can feel very expensive in a, if you put them in USD. So we try to minimize that without affecting security. But this means that we have to change some ABIs and some way to interface. So if you really have tooling built for Governor Alpha or Bravo, and you don't want to update that, and it assumes that the, the, the interaction with the co contract will be the same, and that the contract will have a non-chain storage of the proposal that have been created, and you don't want to rely on, on off-chain storage like, like, like Tally does or like a subgraph would do, then you can add this compatibility layer. And this should hopefully remove all the inconsistencies between us and Bravo. It will exactly mimic the interface of, of, of Governor Bravo. It comes with its own uh, counting module that is tailor-made to have the exact same behavior as Bravo. Uh, it's more expensive than more gas. But if what you want to go is have the maximum compound Bravo compatibility because you want to use UI, um, that's something you may want to consider. Uh, and I think I will leave it for now, and and because it's I've been quite long, uh, and leave Martin show you how how Defender plugs into this. Okay, thank you, Adrian. Um, well, after this masterclass on Governor by by Hadrian, um, I will show you something really simple. Um, how to create uh, a proposal for from Defender using Governor. Um, first, a little word on. Sorry, I'm, I'm going to minimize this so you don't have to see it. Um, a little word on on the components uh, of Defender, which is uh, a platform that helps you ship uh, smart contract systems faster and, and more securely. Um, we have admin, which is uh, a way for a, a UI for you to automate and secure all your contract administration. You can uh, build uh, operations there and then choose how they get executed. Uh, we'll get back to it in a minute. Uh, Relay, which is a way uh, for you to manage your private keys securely with best practices and then use it, use it to, to uh, execute transactions on your project. Um, Autotasks, which is uh, serverless functions uh, that let you interact with your smart contracts. 
sentinels to monitor and send notifications on those smart contracts an advisor which is a knowledge base um or we full of the the security best practices that we've been collecting through, throughout the years um what we are going to do to create the proposal on defender is very simple we'll just uh, build a, a simple transaction then we'll select a governor contract to execute it um point community to tally that's uh, what denison will will show you later um, and then defender will track uh, the proposal status um so here you can see defender this is uh the admin interface for a simple contract called withdrawer which lets you withdraw um, ERC20 tokens. Um, and what I'm going to do is to create an admin action, select a, a function to call, in this case, it's going to be withdraw ERC20. We have a fantasy ERC20 token called RabbitCoin. And I'm saying I will withdraw one of those. Um, and then we can set the execution strategy, um, which has a, a menu of options. Um, up to very recently, we only offered uh, multisigs with Gnosis Safe or the legacy Gnosis multisig and EOAs. But now we are also um, letting you uh, send the proposals to, to a governor contract. Um, so what I'm going to do real fast, I have a, a contract, a, a governor already loaded into the system. I'm going to select it. And then I will just choose some name for my, for my proposal. Click on admin. And now I see uh, a little summary of, of the proposal that I'm, I'm going to be sending to, to Governor um, with some details on what exactly is going to be executed and, and, and even the, the hex encoded data for uh, added uh, checks. Um, so I'm just going to click Send to Governor, confirm this. And after a little longer that the, the, the transaction is, is sent, um, well, it's taking a while, live demos, right? Okay, so now Defender is telling me that it's in Governor and that we can continue the flow on, on the tally voting UI. Um, this is already, as you can see, um synchronizing with the events that governor is sending so if each time you enter to defender you will still be able to to monitor at what stage the proposal is but the voting itself will happen in in tally and if i'm yeah we can see the the proposal i just created here so i don't want to spoil tally too much i will hand over to to denison now okay great <laughs> Um, so this is Tally. Tally, uh, Tally, our goal is to really make on-chain governance work. And what that requires is, you know, if you look at the smart contract level, which OZ Governor is now providing, um, there's a lot more to having a successful DAO, a successful governance than the smart contract layer. There's the entire social layer and the community participating in your votes. So to do that, what we've done at Tally is we built a front end that allows you to participate in these DAOs really easily. And that includes doing things like voting, looking at the other participants in your ecosystem, um, and really sort of like nice visuals around that. So just to take you a, a quick walk through what Tally looks like today, um, we have a list of governances that are all using um, the governor framework. Some of them will be using soon the Open Zeppelin governor framework, and we are uh, basically supporting any governor style. So if you go and we can look into something, for example, a Gitcoin here, that's one popular governance. You can see voting power of the different participants in the ecosystem. So if we look at past 30 days, we can sort of see how uh, folks are trending in, term their, in terms of their delegated votes. Uh, here you can see the active proposals. We have two active proposals in, in the Gitcoin ecosystem and some executed ones. 
And then we can see the top voters, the top participants in this ecosystem. Uh, one of the things that we're working on is giving more context of who these participants are. Um, very frequently when we work in the, the, the um, Ethereum space, we recognize uh, folks by their addresses, Ethereum addresses, and that can be very confusing. And that can leave your DAO governance with the feeling of being very anonymous. So users can actually uh, link their profile on Tally or use other tools such as Sybil to give themselves an identity in the ecosystem. And then that shows up on Tally. So you'll be able to like, click into individuals like Austin Griffith here um, and load up their profile to see actually how do they behave and act in these governances. So in this case, Austin Griffith, at least with uh, the address that he has linked, participates in Gitcoin. Uh, we can see a history of his delegations, folks um, delegating more or less power to him. And then we can actually see that he has created two proposals, the Moonshot Workstream Allocation um, and the GTC Allocation. So we, here we can understand a little bit more about who Austin Griffith is as a delegate in this governance ecosystem. So that helps us inform our decisions. Uh, do we want to vote with them? Do we want to delegate our votes to them, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So let's just open up a proposal, uh, the Moonshot Workstream Allocation. What we see here is a little bit like what you saw earlier. Um, we see the, 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 this vote, I guess, is ongoing. Yeah, this vote is ongoing. So uh, you can see here how the vote is going. This is not really a contentious vote. Uh, Everybody is voting for the Moonshot Workstream Allocation. Um, but so we get to see the sort of like timeline of how people are voting. This is very useful to understand which voters are um, sort of trendsetters versus followers. There are some voters who will only vote after they've passed the quorum necessary to make the vote uh, pass, which is good because, you know, long term, maybe, you know, they're on the side that's winning. But it's really interesting people, uh, for example, Lefteris or uh, Griff Green, who vote before it's obvious what the outcome of the vote's going to be. So this is another tool for your community to understand uh, who's participating and how, right? Um, so here you can also vote on it. I'm not, not going to go through the flow. That's, that's pretty uh, straightforward. The other thing that we're, you're able to do is when you go to a governance, you can actually add a new proposal. So this is a little bit like what we saw in Defender. However, Defender's interface is really a lot slicker. This is the first time I saw the Defender interface for creating a proposal. That is great. We are working on creating a new proposal um, page. And this is for when uh, folks in your community want to create a proposal, right? So uh, as a governance team, like building a protocol, you would use a tool like Defender as, your, as the protocol sort of like managers to really do high security uh, proposals. But if you're going to be a DAO and decentralized, you should give the power to create proposals also to your community, as long as they meet that quorum level. So using Tally, uh, folks that have reached that quorum level can also create proposals that become live on the, 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 uh, in the DAO governance that folks can then vote on. So I think that's a pretty good overview of, of Tally today. Um, we have some exciting new features coming. Uh, but currently you could already use it to, to do all this. I think one more thing that I wanted to show is we have an administration panel, which allows the team to execute or uh, queue or cancel decisions once they are live. And so you can see that here where if, um, if you had other active proposals, you would be able to participate in the process of queuing them, executing them or canceling them if you meet the smart contract conditions. So that sort of really helps that other team members or other folks in the community can participate uh, greater in your, in your DAO. So I think that's a pretty good overview of, of Tally, really committed to making on-chain governance uh, work. And uh, if you deploy a governance using um, OZ Governor, uh, you can reach out to us and be added to the Tally platform. Okay. So yeah, this is our Discord link. So um, you, can, you can join our Discord there. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Denison, for this amazing presentation. I think Tally and, and the and the compound gover and the open Zeppelin governor uh, will, will really work together on building something great for the community. Uh, also, something that is pretty new to Open Zeppelin is Open Zeppelin subgraphs. Uh, that was announced at CTHCC, so just about a month ago. And obviously, Open Zeppelin governor is supported by Open Zeppelin subgraph. That means that if you have a com, uh, you could, we are already able to to index, I don't know, ownable access control activity as well as time locks. Now you will be able to index your your ERC20 token, your your time lock, 
and your governor all in the in the same subgraph uh, very quick, easily using OpenZeppelin subgraph. So I think this is amazing. Also, again, since uh, OpenZeppelin sub uh, con uh, contracts and the, the governor uh, is uh, is compatible in terms of events with uh, Compound Bravo, uh, this means that you are also able to to index uh, a governor Bravo uh, contract using this uh, this uh, OpenZeppelin subgraph. Uh, mechanism so 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 that's that's good as well uh here are are the, the customer links that we want to to send you to open the pin contracts or doc or forum defender and and obviously tally as well uh, that that we showcased today uh, thank you uh, and i'm sure we'll have more more questions